Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Cloda. I work in the commissioning team at Folans. I'm joined this evening by Dervla Murphy, and she is going to be leading this webinar on tackling the CBAs. So you're all very welcome. Dervla will be no stranger to many of you. She teaches French and history at Loretto High School Beaufort in Rathfarnham. She's also head of French there and SSE coordinator. She's an experienced examiner at Junior and Leaving Cert and associate with the PDST MFL team and an experienced uh, teacher training have, teacher trainer having lectured on French methods uh, on the PME course at UCD. So some of you here today might even have been in one of her classes. And of course, many of you will know her as the author of Popular Leaving Cert Title Tu Va Bien and now uh, jun the new junior cycle programme Tu's Ensemble. So tonight is going to, Dervla is going to take us through some guidelines, some challenges and some practical advice for getting to grips with the French CBAs. She will also highlight some of the features and supports uh, in Tu's Ensemble that are designed to make this process as pain free as possible for students and teachers. So our plan this evening is to finish around 7.45. Uh, the meeting will be recorded, so anyone who has registered will receive a link to the recording uh, about 48 hours after the meeting. Derv is going to speak for around 25 minutes and then we'll have an opportunity for you to ask her some questions using the chat box. Um, if following tonight's webinar you have any questions or you want to find out more about Derbless Junior Cycle French Programme Tous Ensemble, then you can of course speak to your local rep. Sorry, slides are not working. You can speak to your local rep or you can visit folins.ie where you can check out the flipbooks of both of the textbooks, the portfolio and a sample of the digital resources. Um, at this stage now, it just it falls to me to hand over to Dervla. So, bon chance. Merci, Claude, c'est gentil. Um, so I'd just like to start um, by thanking Claude for that nice introduction. Um, I'm seeing there quite a lot of uh, familiar names um, on coming up there. So just thank you very much for coming out uh, on, I know, a Monday night, you know, just kind of coming up to uh, assessment time for the Leaving Cert Orals and obviously coming up for uh, CVAs as well. So I'm delighted that you could uh, join us this evening. So what I would like to do is I suppose um, to kind of demystify a little bit um, the classroom based assessments CBA 1 and CBA 2 in the French language classroom. So to try and put a little bit of structure on it, what I've decided to do is for both of our CBAs is to go through the official guidelines but then I suppose, you know, more and early more important than that is to get some practical advice, you know, having gone through uh, both the CBAs, CBA 1 actually a couple of times, CBA 2 not as many times um, due to COVID, but kind of, I suppose, you know, learning, learning on my feet, what do I find that really helps our learners really engage and successfully um, get through? through these two types of classroom based assessment and um, what are the main challenges? Because I mean, you know, we, we have to be honest here. CBAs, you know, when you've 28 students in a lively class, it can be hard to get them through it. And then the last thing is really the student organisation. And this for me is something that I found is absolute key that the better organised my students, just the smoother the, the whole process is. So if we have a look at um, the uh, if we have a look at uh, CBA one, I just want to start, um, I suppose, looking at what are the um, official guidelines, you know, that were given. So just for anyone who is, um, you know, new to teaching French or has been thrown into second year and you're in a panic about, you know, uh, how do I do CBA one? Where do I find the information? Um, this little booklet that I have there um, on the screen, it is the Junior Cycle Modern Foreign Languages Guidelines for the Classroom Based Assessment and Assessment Task. It's available from the NCCA. It was published in September. September of 2019. It is the absolute Bible when it comes to um, CBAs. I would definitely say this is a document to share with your students in an abridged form. You know, it's not just for teachers. Students can get so much out of it as well. So the first thing for CBA one, obviously it's oral communication. Um, 
depending on the school that you're in, you'll be given a three week window. It comes um, the NCCA recommend towards the end of second year. So we're talking for right now to the end of the year. And in that three week window, you have freedom to choose a format from the options outlined so that students can choose to do an interview, a presentation, a role play or a conversation based on a stimulus of their choice. Things I suppose we really have to remind our students is that it is an oral communication task. So it's not, you know, reading from a sheet. It's not just trying to learn it off and then just, you know, fling it all out. It really is um, learning the skills of communicating, the skills of working with others. So it's really important from the start that we ask our students to think about how they communicate and interact with each other but also with their teacher. And we'll have a look at that with the scripted questions at the end. So I'm just going to see, sorry there, just getting this. Okay, so um, in the CBA, as well as doing their presentations, students will be asked some simple unscripted questions. Um, this is something that causes a little bit of anxiety, but you can ask teacher to repeat, repeat or rephrase the question. And then following the oral communication, all students have to do a written reflection note. That's talking about the part they played, the materials, how they prepared for it. Regardless of them working in a group or working um, individually, everyone must complete their own student uh, reflection note. And that's quite an important thing uh, to have them prepped for. So they're the official guidelines. You know, we, we've had them for nearly four or five years now. But in reality, what does that look like in a busy classroom? And, you know, certainly in my classroom, I'm teaching, I teach all girls. Uh, mixed ability, I have 28, maybe even sometimes 29 learners in the class. So how do I get 28 learners to be productive over a three week period to keep them motivated, keep them on task? Um, certainly at the beginning, I found something that was very hard for the students was just the kind of performance level of um, anxiety that there was. You know, having to get up and speak in front of your peers is something that we should never, never, un, you know, um, underestimate for, you know, 14 year old uh, students. So how to build that confidence in their oral skills? Encouraging students to work independently and to self reflect. Um, you know, it can be that three week period can be intense. If you have 28 students coming at you all the time to ask you to correct, to check. I mean, as I always say, there's only one of me <laughs> and many students in the class. So how to kind of set them up, scaffold them so that they know what they're doing for every class. And you can kind of go around and check in as opposed to you're the focal point of the CBA. The other thing, and I know this is something that many, many teachers, you know, have said to me that that three week window in second year coming up towards the end of the year, you know, we hardly have a week to give to a CBA, let alone three weeks. So how do you manage to maybe keep a little bit of learning going on um, so that the CBA doesn't kind of take over this whole month um, of learning? So there are the challenges that, you know, I found in my classroom and um, working with the PDST, working with the other associates. You know, this is coming across from all classrooms all around Ireland, whether you're teaching uh, boys, whether you're teaching girls, um, whether you're teaching in co-ed, you know, mixed ability setting. These are this is the reality of CBA one in the classroom. So how do we, I suppose, uh, help our learners to overcome these challenges? And the first thing I would say is lay the groundwork early from the first day of first year. We have to make sure that oral work is embedded in our learners um, uh, their skill set that it's not an add on that we just do at certain times of the year that when you come to French class, you will be speaking French. And um, yes, of course, it can be hard to do if you've 30 students, but taking the time to prioritize it from first year, it just makes CBA one much more approachable, both for students and teachers. And I think if we're talking about reducing anxiety, it starts in first year. 
sometimes uh, when we're stressed and we just want to get through the coursework, you know, and we just want to keep on going with reading and listening and, and, and written work, we kind of say, oh, you know, I don't have time. I, I can't get them all uh, to talk. But really, it's something we have to prioritise. So even in my teaching journal, it's something I have marked down just all the time. Reset, you know, are they doing enough oral work? Um, something that I found that's really helped my learners is to set a mini CBA one as part of a Christmas or a summer exam. For example, um, I ask my students uh, in first year for their like mini CBA. Could they record themselves so they use a device if they have an iPad, if they have a phone? They record themselves maybe just introducing themselves. So I might set out a little list of guidelines for them, you know, ask and they give me 10 good sentences. They record themselves saying it and they send it in. And even that small exercise, making it part of their assessment, really introduces the idea from first year of this is something that is part and parcel of the junior cycle French course. And it means when they come to do the real thing, they're not starting from scratch. So I would really encourage people get those. You don't even have to call it a mini CBA. You can put, you know, maybe a, a, a nicer name uh, on it, like a uh, mon blog. Um, the next thing I would say is that for me, um, teaching junior certificate French, I felt that, you know, oral was really, really just left to the side. Then when we came in with um, our junior cycle, moving on from the certificate, I still kind of found that oral wasn't really being addressed in the textbooks that were out there. Um, it's something I feel very passionate about. If anyone is using uh, Tu va bien for senior cycle, you'll see that oral is at the heart of the book. And I wanted the same here for Tous Ensemble. So in Tous Ensemble 1 and Tous Ensemble 2, I have worked into the text a series of exercises that really help students get to grip with spoken production. That is, of course, the skill of students being able to present, to talk for maybe 30 seconds, 60 seconds on, on a topic. Um, spoken production, it's not just you know, standing up and saying the words, it's working on pronunciation, it's working on delivery and these set of exercises. So we have a top chrono exercise. So for every chapter, they're asked to, um, you know, give a little presentation. They time each other. They have peer feedback on it. Then throughout the book, we have lots of opportunities for presentations. And um, as you can see there, just in the little cutout, they're really heavily scaffolded because I, you know, as a teacher, it drives me mad when I see do a presentation on a market or do a presentation on a francophone country. You know, for students to work independently, and to scaffold our learners, they need to have really strong success criteria so they know what success looks like and they're able to work independently. So that's for spoken uh, production. Then, of course, we move on to our spoken interaction, which is, um, you know, a dialogue, students working in twos or in uh, small groups. It could be conversations or interviews. It could be role plays, of course. Course. And once again, to try and really help the students, the type of exercises I have embedded in Tous Ensemble, um, you can often differentiate. You have A and B options. You have Niveau 1 and Niveau 2 options. Sometimes for our more able students, I'll suggest some twists so that really you're helping every learner learn at their own pace and their own ability, but all the time having that scaffolding, which really, really helps them. So straight from first year. They're getting used to the idea of that they have to have conversations, they're going to do role plays, and when it becomes part and parcel of your teaching, it means that when it comes to CBA time, students are very familiar with what is going to be asked of them. Uh, organisation, uh, I have to say, is the biggest thing. I would say as a teacher, the first time I did my CBA one, I think I was more nervous than the students. Now, to be honest, it's actually something I kind of look forward to because it is, it can be a lot of fun. I ask my students to bring in props, you know, to have nice backgrounds. And 
it's kind of like a little celebration of French. And that's the way I suppose once I'm organised, then my students are organised and we have a much, much better uh, experience of CBA1. So if we have a look, you know, how do we do that? So something that I've kind of put together um, is my 10 step preparation checklist. So whether a student is in, whether a student is out, whether they're playing camogie, hockey, whatever it is, students have this checklist in advance. They know on what date they're expected to do the different sections and the steps. And it's something then it's like it's something concrete for them to be able to work from. Um, after the uh, webinar, um, everyone is actually going to be emailed a copy of this 10 step preparation checklist. So um, I hope you use it and I hope you find it as valuable um, as I do with my learners. So really what it is, we have the sections um, and once again, it's leaning into the wonderful resources that are produced by the JCT for all of our learners and for all teachers of French in Ireland. So I would start by showing them the CBA one how to just to show that this is something on a national level, you know, and it's done in a nice student friendly approach. Um, then we think about how you will work. And once again, you know, these are things that we have a five minute class discussion on the pros and cons. And as you see there, you know, they then have to write down their decision, date it, I come round and I initial it. So it just means that, you know, you're putting the emphasis on your students to work as opposed to saying, oh, I'll think about it. I might do this. I might do that. And then obviously choosing your format, you know, show them those MFL assessment guidelines. You know, once again, you can talk through the pros and cons. Um, and then by the end of that five minutes, once again, they have to choose their format. I find that otherwise students were wanted to work on their own, then they thought it was too hard, then they went back. So I really find having this checklist just makes things run a lot smoother. Um, choosing the topic, what I have found is really good is I just keep a little list of past topics that worked well, topics that are, you know, suitable for everyone, for maybe some of the less able students, you know, you can kind of guide them towards topics they really have the vocab for. And um, for our more able students, you know, giving them some ones that, you know, might be on video games uh, that really worked well. And once again, nail down that decision. Okay, what have they chosen the topic of? Uh, preparing the script is incredibly important. Um, so I would really get them to lean into the textbook. You know, um, sentence starters is something I have just fallen in love with over the last uh, three or four years of teaching. I just find them amazing for independent learning. Um, tell them to go back to their portfolio pieces. Um, you know, this is where it's their script they take ownership because you know in reality the first time i did it i was nearly writing you know correcting uh, 28 scripts from scratch you know and it, it it has to be the students work so the other thing i say to them is they must speak for at least three minutes even if they're in a group three minutes um and they have to time themselves reading their script at a performance uh, speed Redrafting, and this is where I found I really had to step in and help the students. See, how do we do this for ourselves? So you're asking them if you have modeled this well in portfolio pieces, you're asking them to look for spelling and grammar, and then once again, asking a classmate to look and correct. Uh, questions, you know, go through the question words in French. Reflection is so important. You know, these reflection notes and um, the portfolio pieces when you're doing them, you should be reflecting to help them learn. Great descriptors. You know, once again, give them the MFL guidelines, show them where to find the great descriptors working in groups. How can I make my CBA better, you know, to fall into uh, the category that I feel I deserve? And then just practice, practice, practice. And I think it always helps if you can give them uh, roughly, you know, a date um, in that last week of the window. So that's the checklist that I use. Um, how do I use my textbook to support me um, when I'm really focusing on CBA1? Um, so I kind of felt that when I was writing the textbook, there wasn't really um, 
you know, a chapter dedicated to the CBAs. There might have been a couple of pages here or there or maybe something online, but really, you know, for the students, if they see it in their textbook in this chapter 10, it really shows to them, you know, that the CBA is important, but also it's just a normal step in their learning French. So in this dedicated uh, oral communication chapter, um, in very student friendly language, I have the four different oral tasks set out for them. Um, one thing that I really enjoyed creating because sometimes I find you know it's great to go on to um, you know TES and look for resources but there's not really that many resources created for the Irish market so this was something I was so proud to create. Um, I have five videos modelling the four different types of oral communication in CBA 1. So the students, if they want to do an interview, a role play, a presentation, a conversation, they can go in, they can watch the video, you know, you can project it on the board. And I would say it's the language used because, you know, I am used to doing this. I know the style of language that they need and it's very, very realistic. It's very achievable for our students. Um, those videos, each one is paired with exercises in that unit 10 of the textbook. So students could even perhaps do the role play themselves to practice and then watch the video um, and then go back and see, well, you know, what things could we have to improve? And I have the scripts for all of the videos um, available as well online for uh, teachers to share with the students. Um, so that is CBA 1. Um, if I was to be honest, I would say I think CBA 1 causes a little bit more anxiety because, you know, the students have to stand up there in front of their peers. I think CBA 2 um, is one that students can deal with um, a lot better. I suppose they're older, you know, it's coming in the um, kind of the spring term of third year and also it's looking back over work they've done. So these are once again the official guidelines. They need to choose three texts. One text must be in an oral format, i.e. spoken piece. They must choose one text to, shows, uh, to uh, show some awareness of the culture or country of the language you are learning. Once again, this could be spoken or written. And then on top of their three uh, text they must do a student reflection note for each one. So what are the challenges with CBA 2? So it's slightly different I suppose because now we're focusing on on the written word. So I would say you know the first time I did CBA 2 I inherited a class who I didn't have in first or second year. You know and I'm like right take out your portfolios and they're kind of like portfolio you know they did have it done it's just they didn't really you know have that label on it so it's so important that when you start with a class that you have to make sure that they are completing suitable portfolio pieces in first year you know fantastic but incredibly important in second and third year so having good pieces to choose from is the first challenge the second challenge is the logistics how do you help 28 plus students each redraft three portfolio pieces to the best of their ability? That means that you could be overseeing up to 84, if my maths is OK, portfolio pieces. The actual logistical um, task is huge there. Um, and then once again, you know, making sure that the ones they choose, it's not because necessarily they're their favourites, but they actually correspond to what the Department of Education to the guidelines that we have been given. So in reality, what are the things that I do or I've kind of picked up along the way to help my learners to overcome these challenges in CBA 2? So the first thing I would say and the absolute most important is you have to, from the very start, mention the student language portfolio emphasize its importance. Whether you're doing that as a physical folder that they're putting their portfolio pieces into, whether you're using their portfolio workbook that accompanies a textbook, and then also a digital portfolio keeping the recordings of their oral pieces. However they do it, it is so important that from the beginning they know 
they must have a student language portfolio. Um, we think that our students are whizzes with technology. In reality, sometimes they struggle to create folders if they're a Microsoft school or a Google school. You know, sometimes they don't know how to create folders. So I always think it's a good idea in first year, you know, to take half a class to show them and to label it student language portfolio, e-portfolio and show them where and how to uh, store them. The other thing is so important to introduce our learners to the language of self-reflection and practice it early on. So I would start with a simple AFL technique of two stars and a wish after every portfolio piece that they do. I would also include that in their winter and summer assessment to show them that that reflection piece is actually quite important. Starting the portfolio pieces early, so you remind them how important their student language portfolio is. I tend to prioritise portfolio pieces as important end of unit learning tasks. So we never start the unit of learning with the portfolio piece. We do it towards the end or the if a, a chapter, for example, in the textbook will always have two units of learning. We would do it at the end of each one. We also need to encourage students to get into the habit of redrafting, to look at their work, to proof it. If we do it too much, it becomes just, you know, a little bit of a heavy task and they don't give it their all. So I would prioritise maybe three portfolio pieces a term um, to redraft and also just for ourselves in corrections, you know, we, we have to keep it manageable. Um, I would also set sometimes a redrafted portfolio piece as an assessment. So I'm assessing um, formally how well they are able to redraft and improve something. Um, so basically, don't keep the redrafting, don't keep the reflecting, you know, just for CBA2, do it in first year, do it in second year. Um, just to show you the type of CBA style uh, portfolio pieces I favour. So when I was writing the portfolio book, for me as a teacher, if I'm going to leave the textbook and open another book and the chaos that comes with that, I really want to make sure it's a valuable exercise. So the portfolio pieces they're doing, they are very, very suitable for the student language portfolio. They're well scaffolded. They have excellent success criteria and there's differentiation in there. We have a place for them to physically write out their script and then also their digital portfolio, a place for them to physically write down, you know, um, how they feel about it and also where they have stored it. So, you know, start kind of as you as you mean to go on with meaningful portfolio pieces. Um, once again, like in Tous Ensemble 1, Tous Ensemble 2, there's a dedicated assessment chapter at the end, that's chapter 10, and it really walks the students um, step by step through uh, their guide to CBA2. So once again, by putting it in the physical textbook, it's showing students it's part of the course. It's a normal part of uh, third year French. Um, trying to really get them to engage in the redrafting um, in the textbook itself. There's a worked example. We have guidelines. Also then in the portfolio book, they have about um, eight um, pieces they're able to redraft, be it oral or be it written work. On Folan's Hive as well, um, there is a video which kind of talks them through the process of redrafting and they can physically see it happening uh, before their eyes. Once again, with um, redrafting, the sentence builders that are available at the end of every unit of the book are a really important um, resource for students to work independently and it really helps them um, to just be successful in these difficult uh, productive tasks. When it comes to uh, reflection, you know, it's something that we have to ease our students into. We have to work on it with them. So we have once again in the textbook in chapter 10, um, there is the theory, you know, how do I reflect? And then at the end of each of the portfolio sections, there's different activities um, which really help the students to master the student reflection note. So I suppose 
My overall advice is just restez calme et parlez en français, respirez. Um, the CBAs, you know, the more you do them and the more you put that structure in place, they can actually turn out to be quite an enjoyable experience, uh, both for the learners and for the teachers. So I would just like to say thank you very much. Um, and I hope that you've really found something practical in tonight's uh, presentation. Thank you so much, Darbla. That was fantastic. So um, at this stage now, as I've said, we can open up the chats for a couple of questions. As I mentioned previously, uh, you can submit your question into the chat box, which for me is in the bottom right. Uh, you might have it popped out. Um, I think if you're logged in with a Microsoft account, you also have the option to submit questions via the Q&A function. We have Aoife in the background who is monitoring that. So if any questions come in via there, she'll pop them into the chat as well. So just whichever option you have in front of you, if into the chat box is probably easiest. Um, and I'll keep an eye on the questions as they come through and pass them to Derbla. So, um, yeah. Don't be shy because my students always have a million questions for me. So, uh. lots of thank yous coming through, Darbla. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci, c'est gentil. One question that did come through in the background there, Darbla. Do you have to, you mentioned the assessment chapter, are you required, would you recommend using that at the end of the book or how would you suggest you use it? No, um, I think like everything, you know, the sooner you introduce it um, and the more information you give the learners, it really empowers them. So, you know, particularly I might not start it, you know, on the first day of first year, but I would certainly be when we're doing role plays, you know, around from chapter four, chapter five of first year, I would be using that chapter, you know, to help them and to show them this is why we do um, the role plays that there's, you know, there's a, a reason behind it. And I just think it kind of gives them a bit of confidence if they can you know if they're not too sure they can always go back and see you know what is it what am I supposed to do um, and I think it just kind of yeah it just reduces the anxiety so no absolutely um the same you know with uh, book two I've put them at the end for reference um but really I would dip in and out of them all the time like for homework I might ask them to look at like the reflection or the redrafting um section you know and it's no don't just keep it for that three week period, you know, it's something that they need to be familiar with, definitely. OK, thank you, Darla. Maria had asked for CBA one. Can students ask questions at the end or is it only the teacher? Um, so at the end, it is really the teacher who asks the unscripted questions. So the idea there is that, you know, some students are very, very good at learning off material. But if they were, you know, talking about like, um, you know, um, ma visite au marché, and then you say to them something like, um, qu'est-ce que tu um, acheter au marché? You know, if they have absolutely no idea what you're saying and um, you know the idea is that they have to be able to produce a little bit of um spontaneous language it's something though that i would prepare with them um in advance so no they are their teacher unscripted uh, questions thank you can their portfolio be their devoir copy does it have to be a separate folder no no not at all the only thing i would say is you know um like if you are doing a devoir copy, I would have devoir slash portfolio so that when it comes to second or third year, you know, and you say now because they have to redraft original pieces, they're not supposed to go and write, you know, three new portfolio pieces so that they're aware that those devoirs are, you know, important portfolio exercises. So I think that's a really great way you know, to have it because you're putting priority on it. So the name isn't as important as the fact that they're actually in there and the students know that they're leading towards something in third year. Thank you. They're coming through thick and fast. Now I'm going to keep sending them your way. Does each student um, in a CBA group have to speak for three minutes or is it a global three minutes? 
Yeah, so this is this is the tricky one, because obviously students think if five of us form a group, I'll have to speak for about a minute. So for that reason, I mean, you know, when I've kind of um, gone to like the JCT cluster days, that's something I've always asked. And the answer has kind of been, you know, they have to speak for a reasonable amount of time. So I would usually say to them in their groups, they have to speak for you know, two and a half minutes. If they're speaking for a minute, it's it's not enough because each of them are being judged individually and you have to try and get a flavour of their accent, their pronunciation, their presentation. So I do definitely agree that, you know, you can't have four people talking for three or four minutes. That, that's too long. But I would put in that kind of, you know, two and a half minute rule. And don't forget that you're going to be asking them some individual questions. So I usually say to them a group is like three people, four people max, because uh, it is good to get them to do it in groups. I think it kind of gives them a bit more security and self-confidence. But you don't want the group to be kind of um, so that they only have, you know, 30 seconds or a minute to speak. So, you know, you don't have to exactly have it, um, you know, bang on three minutes for every student. But at the same time, I wouldn't let them away with, you know, a minute or a minute 30. Thank you. Uh, Louise asks if you have any advice about the written assessment students need to complete on CBA2. I uh, presume she means the assessment task. Is there or is no, no, it's the that be the uh, reflection template. Is there a jargon to help them write appropriate answers? Is, I'm, I'm using Louise's so, words there. Yeah, so I mean, I think this is what I was saying about, you know, um, I really found that students it's very hard for them to find this language of self-reflection. So, you know, the best place to start is Bloom's um, taxology to have these active verbs, these doing verbs, you know, analyze, understand. Um, also, that's why, you know, in the portfolio, I really put in about three or four different styles of self-reflection activity, you know, to unlock. So maybe you have a sentence starter, you give them the start of the sentence, you know, I feel that um, this written piece was very strong because it shows and then, you know, they can fill it in. So it might be agreement of adjectives. I was able to talk in three tenses. I made sure I used, you know, adverbs. So yes, they do need a little bit of jargon, but it's still at an appropriate level to them. Um, I would perhaps stay away from putting up sample answers when it comes to reflection. I would really try and scaffold them into it. And that's where the these exercises in the portfolio book, I think, really, really help the learners. Um, and once they kind of get, you know, because we don't want to um, set up, you know, like English that you have to have a particular standard, you know, if it comes from the heart, if it really comes from them and it shows that they are thinking about their learning, that's really uh, the key to doing a good uh, student reflection note. OK, thank you. Um, Claire asks, did you say that students fill out a student reflection form after CBA1 and do we need to keep a copy of this? Yeah, they do. And I mean, this is, you know, like a lot of the students, particularly at the beginning, were saying to me, like, Miss, you know, why do we have to do this? Like, what grade am I getting? But it's up to us to show them that we're placing value on the self-reflection because that is going to help them in the assessment task, which happens after CBA 2 in third year. The assessment task is worth 10 percent of their grade. So you might have a student saying it means nothing. Well, actually it does because it's helping them by doing a good reflection on their portfolio pieces. That is then going to come and help them to do a good assessment task and get as many of that 10% as they as they can. That's good. And that kind of answers your question, Ian. Ian said many of the people seem to be aware CBA1 carries no percentage marks. How can we help motivate them anyway? So that I think you've answered that very well um, in, in yeah. that answer. Um, do you have a bank of statements which are accessible to help with the self-reflection? You've kind of answered that as well. Do you want to expand on that at all? So certainly like in the I have them like in, in the portfolio book um, I would have like sentence starters. I would have the um, act, the action verbs that they um, I have them each explained kind of, you know, what they need to do for each section. Um, so I think, yes, definitely having um, 
kind of like a scaffold to help them is really, really good. You know, what you don't want, though, is just them all writing exactly the same uh, reflection. So I really think kind of when you start from first year and you show them, you know, the techniques, the two star and a wish, the even better if the what worked well, WW, that you kind of ease them in um, that way. Also, I would always share with them, you know, the what's important in a piece so they have that type of language. Okay, thank you. In CBA2, uh, Patricia asks, do the written pieces have to be a certain length? So once again, in the guidelines, um, no. It just says that it has to, you know, there's those, the the things that it must be, one must be cultural, one must be oral. Um, it should it should be a piece that reflects their, their best work. And this is where differentiation comes in because it is a common level course. They don't put down certain word counts. It has to be the best that that student can produce. So, you know, in the past, I've had some students who I know are very, very capable, very able, you know, hand me up something that was just very, very short. And I would just kind of say to them during the three week period, is this best you can do? You know, think about past pieces that you've done. How can we make it better? So that's the way if I felt something was just, you know, absolutely rushed off um, I would really try and and guide them, you know, and just show them the um, show them the descriptors so they know what, you know, to get each descriptor, what is being, you know, what's expected. So no, there's to be no word count. I would just say to the best of their ability. Definitely. And also if they go too long, they're just going to end up making, you know, uh, too many More mistakes. mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patricia asks if you have any tips regarding keeping portfolios and recordings online using Teams, etc. Yeah, so um, in our school, we're a Microsoft school, so we use uh, OneDrive. So what I would get the students to do quite often is, you know, I'll show them how to create a folder themselves in their OneDrive, label it my ePortfolio. And um, when they're doing a piece, if they record it, I quite often actually ask them to send it to me as well. And um, so it means that, you know, they know it must be done. And then I would just walk around the class and actually get them to show me how they've labeled the document and where they have actually recorded it, because I think that's the most important thing. You know, they they do it on voice note on their phone, but it's actually sometimes it's showing them, um, you know, and I know in a lot of schools like we would do, like say, like an introduction to Microsoft, and I would always ask the teacher that that be part of it, that, you know, show them how to create these folders, subfolders, show them how to safeguard um, the recordings. And every so often I do ask them to send them to me so that at least I know, you know, they're going to have one um, oral one for their uh, CBA two. OK. Uh, Kira asks about tips for organising a SLAR or an SLAR meeting. Uh, she's an NQT, so it's first time doing this alone. Yeah, um, so I suppose the SLARs, um, like everything, you know, the first time I did one, I probably, you know, over prepared. Um, I recorded every single one of my students uh, for CBA1. Since found out from uh, the JCT um, training that that's not necessary, you record a sample. So what I would say is um, for the SLAR, if there's other teachers, you know, if you're in a school where there's three French teachers, you arrange a time that you're all able to come and you bring samples of the students work. So I would always bring something that I feel is a out and out distinction, that it has all the um, features of quality that we're looking for. And then I bring them for maybe each of the four different levels. I would also maybe bring one just not 100% sure on. You know, I'm kind of thinking maybe this is achieved, but you know, I'm not sure. And they're the ones that you get together, you know, and you talk about, you you play the recordings for CBA 1, you know, you listen to them. For CBA 2, you, you pass around the different pieces. Um, what is really important and what really was important for me was to stick to the guidelines. There are wonderful um, resources up there from the JCT on how to run a SLAR meeting, how to keep the notes. Um, but I would also say keep it realistic. I think the first year I did it, you know, I was kind of thinking, oh, you know, to get a distinction, you have to have the passé composé in there. And then I thought, no, no, hang on. I went back to the guidelines, it is 
where students are at in their language journey at that time in second year. And that's the most important thing. It's not the finished product where they will be after three years for the language one. It's where you expect them to be at for second year French. And I think that's the best thing. Like everything, a slur, a little bit nervous before you go in there. But once you go in and do it once, I mean, you know, you absolutely fly through them. Thank you so much. I'm conscious of time now, so I think that's probably all the time that we have for questions. So just first of all, to say a huge thank you to you, Dervla, and also a huge thank you to everybody who attended this evening um, to remind you that um, those of you, you probably saw in an email prior to attending, but you will be entered into a draw to when there are three sets available for so one for one for three different teachers uh, of the class posters that accompany Tous Ensemble. Uh, we also have these available digitally and the reps have a limited number of printed posters available too. So it's definitely worth reaching out to them for a chat if you've got questions about Tous Ensemble. If you're interested in learning more about the programme, please do go and have a look and follow us online. As, as Dervla said, you know, the textbooks there, the portfolio that Dervla has been speaking about at length tonight is there. You can have a look at it for yourselves. You can have a look at some of those digital resources. Um, so yes, please do go have a look at those. Reach out to your reps if you have any further questions. And just yeah, thank you. Let's have a look at. See, oh, sorry, I'll start again. Have a look and see how uh, Tuesday Ensemble can support you and your students with your CBAs, with your preparation for your assessment, and with above all developing your love of French. So thanks very much. <laughs>